Hi, I thought I'd do a video looking at how much energy is left in AA and AAA batteries under 0.8 volts. I mentioned this in a previous live video because I don't think there's much, if any, real data out there on just that energy under 0.8 volts because as I've mentioned many times in many videos over the years, uh, the manufacturer's data sheets, their characteristic uh, discharge curves, uh, stop at 0.8 volts. It's like the industry standard cutoff voltage level where everyone pretty much agrees that there's basically bugger all energy left in these batteries once they hit 0.8 volts and that's true in most cases of course but of course with uh, circuits like the uh, dual faith and other really ultra low power uh, boost converters there is actually some energy under there but how much so the data sheets are typically stop it you know like a hundred milliwatts or something like that so i thought like what for really low power drains is there anything in there? Is there anything usable? And really, it's I know there's something usable for some applications, but how much as a percentage of the total battery at very low discharge levels? You know, things like products that work for a year or something like that on a set of batteries. Is it worthwhile actually designing your products to go less than 0.8 volts, down to say 0.5 volts or 0.6 volts is like a typical figure? So thought we'd take a look at it because it's hard to get data on this sort of stuff so this is going to be some really long-term testing but I just wanted to do this part one even though we won't get real you know any real results here we need to do long-term stuff just to show you the setup that I'm going to use and some just an initial overnight test I just did here I set it up last night and just did a quick test to make sure all my setups working I'll show you exactly what I'm doing here and then I'll get some I'll start out with some AAA batteries and then I'll get some uh, AA batteries and only one brand at the moment Duracell maybe I can do more brands and compare them things like that but really I wanted to discharge them at get multiple characteristic uh, curves that say maybe a hundred milliwatts, fifty milliwatts, you know, ten milliwatts, things like that. Really low power levels. So I'll show you the setup. We'll have a look. Let's go. Now I started out just wanting to use my BK Precision 8500 electronic load here and I've done a previous video on this where I've done some uh, discharge testing of uh, lithium polymer batteries so click here if you want to uh, see that video so this actually has a battery uh, test mode building you might be able to see battery well, just under there, and it's got some real crappy software that comes with it um, that also does uh, characteristic discharge uh, curves of batteries, and that's all fantastic. But unfortunately, the battery discharge test mode on this thing only supports constant current, and I wanted to do uh, constant power just to make things easier and, you know, uh, maybe a bit more valid for modern products that use DC to DC uh, converters, for example. So... I could have done uh, use the test mode and just use constant uh, current, but yeah, I really wanted a constant uh, power type thing. And this, of course, does constant power. I can enter in 100 milliwatts. I can go to 1 milliwatts resolution. I think it's actually 0.1 milliwatts resolution. I'm not sure if it's actually capable of that, but it at least allows me to enter that. Anyway, still haven't, uh, you know, actually checked the performance verification of this thing right down at the low levels. But anyway, I can set constant power discharge. So it'll just act as a constant power load all the way down to hopefully uh, zero, which we'll uh, take a look at in uh, today's video. But unfortunately, that stupid software, the only way you can log data out of this thing, it's got an RS-232 port on the back and I've got the isolated cable for it and everything. The software that comes with it does not allow you to do constant power, either data logging or battery discharge testing. It's ridiculous. And then, even if you did, the software is so buggy that it doesn't even allow you to export the data to an Excel file, it's got that capability, or a CSV file, it's got that capability, but it just doesn't work, it's just, rawr. I hate horrible software on bloody, this is an otherwise really good product, but, ah, oh, the software is just shit, it really is. Uh, David too, he said, oh yeah, look, I'll just, you know, it should be fairly easy, I'll just write some software for it, so yeah, I said, you know, it's only, R it's RS-232 interface, it's probably like a serial command uh, structure, you know, send it a command, like, you know, please read voltage, or set constant power mode, all in ASCII text, and things like that, and within, uh, like, five minutes, you realise, wah, nope, it, um, it doesn't use regular ASCII, um, you know, text serial commands. It's actually got a 
uh, byte, I think, or 24 byte packet structure with checksums and all sorts of commands, and it's all in hex, and ah, uh, it, uh, it's horrible. For an RS-232 interface, why it can't just use bloody serial strings commands? Anyway, so we abandoned that, and uh, yeah, I've just got my own interface now using my um, HP Benchmeter. Now, because I want to use constant power mode, we can just use this as a constant power load, and the only thing we need to measure is the voltage across the battery, hence why we only need a multimeter to actually log the data. We don't have to log the current, because it doesn't matter. As long as we are confident in this load that it gives constant power all the way down to zero, or whatever cutoff voltage we want to use, it'll be zero in this case, um, then, you know, everything's hunky-dory. We only need to measure uh, the voltage, perfect. And yeah, you could use like a handheld data logging multimeter, uh, for example, but often, um, because this, some of this testing could take a week or more, you know, maybe, you know, a thousand hours or something or things like that. So the actual, if you used a battery powered multimeter, it would actually run out of battery before you could actually test this single AAA or AA battery at a uh, very low power level. So of course you use a proper bench multimeter. I'm using my uh, very nice uh, 34470A seven and a half digit meter here, which actually has a uh, data login mode. So we can actually go in there and set up the uh, interval uh, time and everything like that. Absolutely perfect. Now here's the setup. Uh, I've just got a AAA battery holder. I also have one for uh, AA as well. Now the important thing to do is actually tap the voltage directly off the pins itself. Um, doesn't necessarily matter so much at these ridiculously low currents because these huge beefy wires it's at these currents and it's not going to drop anything right but hey you do it properly um, so I've tapped off uh, there and there I've just got some pins going into these uh, heavy duty connections into there so if you wanted to do you know large currents you would that'd be really important so um, it, that's all we need to do and then we can go into here and data log and then start it and then start our load here. Now I've actually uh, got this data overnight. I just used like a Fuji uh, battery here. It's just one I had lying around and already been discharged a little bit. So this isn't a real uh, test. I just wanted to test that the whole thing ran overnight and I got the data out and I could graph it and everything else just to test the uh, methodology. So we'll take a look at that in a second. And I've been discharging it overnight at um, 100 milliwatts here. And there is a 100 milliwatt curve in the uh, uh, Duracell uh, data sheet as well so we can actually uh, compare that so if we uh, if we go out of there we can see that it's it's doing a weird thing here it's like jumping up and down in voltage like this is like fully discharged to zero overnight so it's doing something weird here so that's most likely like the constant power mode trying to compensate and it's sort of like looks like it's oscillating or doing something weird like that if we actually switch it off we'll see the voltage in the battery actually start to recover a little bit look so i've actually had that effectively um pretty much shorted overnight with the load anyway a relative you know constant power load of 100 milliwatts and you see it's ramping back up but of course if we there's no energy when you remove the load, you're not really recovering the energy in the battery. Yes, the voltage goes back up due to the chemistry, the internal ESR and other you know complex things that are happening inside the battery, but you're not really recovering any energy. So if you put that load back on, that 100 milliwatt load, it's just gonna drop instantly right down to zero. There's just nothing there. But if we set that, if we did a constant current, uh, for example, of say um, uh, 10 milliamps, 0.01, okay, so I'll put that in there and we'll switch on constant current mode, we'll actually see it will be able to deliver uh, some energy because constant power is a different thing, it's got to do math and then compensate. Constant current is uh, it probably uses a different thing internally. So if we switch that on, you can see that we can actually get you know, a continuous 10 milliamps out of this still flat battery at 0.56 volts, and it's going to drop and drop and drop. We can actually um, maybe increase that, see if we can get, uh, can we get 50 milliamps out of the thing, but it's very low current. Remember that, if you want the power, just multiply it. There we go, it's dropping. So we can still get 50 milliamps out of it at 0.4 volts, but it's slowly, there's not much energy left there at all. Wah, it's gone. And of course, the BK Precision is still showing that it's actually still um, delivering 
20 milliamps there at, well, you know, no voltage at bugger all. Oh, no, look, it just vanished. So, yeah, there's like something really at the low end with this thing, so we need to check that. But anyway, uh, let's go have a look at the data. So what I actually had running overnight here, I had the, I'm using the data login uh, mode here. I am at the sample interval, 60 seconds. So I'm taking one sample every 60 seconds. And that one sample is like um, you, just your regular DC volts mode. I've got a fixed 10 volt uh, range here, uh, 10 power line uh, cycles just to do, that's just standard to do a little bit of uh, averaging to get a reasonably um, uh, stable reading and so it's taking one sample every 60 seconds and you can actually um, duration I put in I'm doing number of readings so I calculated that our oh, 2000 should be plenty because unfortunately that's the problem with this uh, method using the multimeter and as opposed to um, the one with using uh, this allows us to program, if we just use the electronic load, we could program in a cutoff voltage where it would actually stop logging at. Um, whereas this one with just the multimeter doesn't allow us to do that. So you have to do a little bit of math up front, know what, know what the uh, capacity of your battery is, know how many readings you're going to want, or, or you can do it in uh, duration as well. But I decided to uh, just calculate the based on sample interview uh, interval and the number of samples, eh, roughly, you know, how long I'd need overnight and then I doubled it or something. I figured I'd need like a thousand samples or something and there was no no delay. We just started it straight away and then I logged it to an external uh, USB uh, key on the thing so uh, into a CSV uh, file which we can uh, take a look at. So all, all you need to do to get uh, to do this thing is to uh, start your data log in here. Just start it and then uh, turn on your load at whatever uh, power um, load that you want and bingo you just leave it there for a day a week however long it takes to just discharge the thing and you've got the uh, CSV data on this stick let's go take a look at it so please excuse the crudity of this uh, data and graph. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Now, the uh, CSV export in from the Agilent meter is, uh, Keysight meter, sorry, is actually uh, quite good. And uh, there we go. It's very simple. The reading number here and then all the readings there in uh, voltage. If you didn't fix it to, say, the 10 point, the 10 volt range, for example, it might switch to, like, um, exponent uh, mode. So instead of doing, you know, 0 point, uh if we go right down here, uh, you know, 0.08 and things like that, it would, um, you know, give you e to the minus 2 and stuff like that. So anyway, here's our graph. I just uh, graphed that very quickly, and you can actually see it. Look, drop off, like practically brick wall response at that 0.8 volts. Anything actually, you know, under 1 volt, you can argue there's not much there. So we're actually discharging this, remember, at 100 milliwatts. So, you know, not a not a huge amount of uh, power. In fact, the um, the Duracell data sheet I mentioned before, it only has a characteristic curve to 250 milliwatts for constant power. The um, Energizer one uh, does. I'll show you that in a second. But look, it's just a, like... You know, even below a volt, there's not much left, let alone 0 0.8. And if we go and actually have a look at the data in here and actually see our individual data points, even though we've got 642 data points by the time it drops out, look, we've only got one data point there under 0 0.8 volts. So that was with that 60-second um, sample interview interval which we actually got up here so you know really we actually have to sample a lot more data than that if we wanted increased resolution on this drop off here having one sample per minute just didn't cut the mustard there so you can actually see there that even if you design your product that drew 100 milliwatts to work down to 0.5 volts you're so proud of yourself oh yeah it's extracting every last drop of energy in there it's only this is a one minute time interval you're only going to get maybe an extra minute or two tops out of the thing before it dies so you went to all that trouble and expense and you might have had to use a much more expensive bill of materials cost uh, dc to dc converter you might have to change your architecture i don't know whatever to work down to 0.5 volts and you just you're just wasting your time at a 100 millivolt uh, product discharge. Not worth it. 
And yes, of course, I could actually speed up all this testing by, like, you know, really heavily pre-discharging the battery down to a volt uh, under load, for example, and then just get, you know, the fine data right at the end. But there's, you know, technically that's not the best way to do it. And, you know, people might complain that, you know, the proper scientific way to do it is, hey, we've got a product, it draws a constant 100 milliwatts or whatever, you know, over its uh, over the life of its product by the time you put it in. Let's, you know, not talk about the, uh, you know, efficiency curves of DC to DC converters and things like that. Um, as the battery voltage drops, it can change. Anyway, let's assume that um, a product draws a constant uh, power all the time, which is a product designed with a DC to DC converter already in it. And it, um, you know, so we want to get some real data, a real characteristic curve of what it looks like, even though for this series of videos I'm going to do, I'm only worried, I'm only interested in this little, tiny little part under 0 0.8 volts here. And clearly, uh, for 100 milliwatts, we're getting bugger all data. And even if we actually did sample it once per second instead of once per 60 second, and we might have been able to get, you know, an extra you know, half a dozen uh, sample points in there. It's Look at the area. It's, it's just nothing compared to the bulk of the rest of it. It's not even 1%. It's bugger all. But the idea of these videos is that we can go down to really low powers, you know, 50 milliwatts, 10 milliwatts, you know, maybe even lower, and see what the characteristic uh, discharge curves look like. In theory, they should be a little bit better than that. They might, like, extend out and drop off more gently uh, for example, under 0 0.8 volts, but hey, that's, but it may not, it may still drop off like a brick wall. So only one way to find out, actually do the long-term testing. Now you can actually see the weirdness happening here right at the end of the, uh, like after it's fully discharged, it discharged, sat at zero for a while, and then maybe due to the uh, battery uh, chemistry, it decided, oh, you know, I'm going to start doing something weird. And then the constant power mode um, as you saw before, when you could actually see the readings just jumping around, it's doing some sort of oscillation. They're doing something weird right down at that level. So I actually now just want to do a quick test on the 8500 electronic load and see what its performance, its constant power performance is like right down at low voltages. Let's check it out. So this is a real easy test to do. We get our Rigol uh, power supply here, like a nice precision power supply that can go all the way down to zero volts. Not all uh, power supplies can, but a good uh, bench laboratory power supply can go down to zero volts. And by the way, um, this isn't like a 0.05% uh, class instrument. So is the uh, Rigol here. And of course the uh, Agilent seven and a half digit meter, oh, it's the duck's gut. So, you know, no problems with any sorts of uh, precision in our measurement. But, and, you know, it doesn't matter. We're looking at the characteristics discharge curve we could you know one percent um, absolute accuracy in our voltage measurements would be fine you know you know and one percent in our uh, power for example would be uh, you know a constant power load it'd be just fine in fact I'll check the uh, data sheet on this and we'll um, have a look at uh, the data sheet for the electronic load see how accurate it is in constant power mode I think it's going to be less than what it is in constant current mode and things like that so because it has to do some math so you've got some additional errors in introduced there anyway Anyway, so we've got our, um, we've got it hooked up here. We remove our battery, of course. You don't want your battery in there. And we just plug the power supply um, straight in. Easy peasy. So we're outputting a uh, volt at the moment. It's on. So we've got one volt. And of course, we're measuring a volt on here. But I haven't turned on the load yet. We're also measuring a volt. We don't need this. Uh, we can just rely on both of these. Anyway, so let's go into constant power mode. Our 0.1 uh, watts, our 100 milliwatts, which we were uh, doing before. So we switch that on. Okay, and we now draw in, there we go, 100 milliwatts, at least significant digit. Who cares, right? It, they basically totally agree. Okay, but that's at one volt. Now, if we start winding our wick down, hang on, I'll uh, zoom in for this one, just so you can see it a bit better. Okay, so if we wind our wick down, I've got my cursor on the um, uh, second decimal place there, so we can 0.99, and we can see it drop. Okay, now what we're looking for now is that this stays at a constant 100 milliwatts, okay, near enough to 100 milliwatts. Once again, we don't care if it's, you know, a few least significant digits out. And you'll notice that our current is going to increase because voltage times current equals power. So if our voltage drops, our battery voltage drops, then our uh, current must increase to compensate. And that's one of the disadvantages of DC to DC converters down at low voltage. As I explained in previous live video, it's like a snowballing 
uh, effect the lower uh, the voltage you get. And you'll notice that it's um, it's still hanging in there at 100 milliwatts. So um, we're just testing the ability of this 8500 electronic load here to actually um, still maintain constant power performance right down at low voltages. So it's still go it's dropping and it's still maintaining our 100 milliwatts there. No problems whatsoever. So, yep, down at 0 0.6, still not a problem. At 0 0.5 volts, which is really what we care about, um, I guess it's still fine. So, yep, this is load is more than suitable, but we go down. Oh, no, no, it's still 100 milliwatts. Let's keep going. I won't bore you to death. 0 0.2 volts, it's still 100. Oh, there we go, we're getting some error. So, down at let's say at 0 0.2 volts here so yeah yeah or is that uh yeah maybe because we're looking at half an amp look we're trying to draw half an amp at 0.17 volt that's a lot of current so you've got to uh you know like we might this is where uh y the drop in these leads could be quite significant but it's not because look, we're getting still getting seven. This is where our um, agilent meter up here can still help because we're actually tapping that point there. But these are really thick, beefy cables. If they weren't, these were just really thin wires. Half an amp would get significant voltage drop across there, and this wouldn't be accurate. As you can see, no problems whatsoever. But we're still like we're 10% out there. Now here's actually where we get to the limitation of our test setup. Yeah, we might be showing an error here, but that's not actually an error caused by this low. We're now getting uh, the error caused by the voltage drop here because look multiply 0.15 volts times 0.66 amps you get basically precisely um, the uh, 100 milliwatts which we've programmed into the thing so this load is still doing the business down at 0.15 down at 0.1 it's hard to the resolution of this uh, thing there we go exactly one amp there right so that's it's still exactly 100 milliwatts so this thing is actually still working absolutely perfectly even though we're getting like point um uh, like 40 percent error over here that's due to even though we're using huge big thick beefy cables here these things are monsters big binding post terminals this wire is bloody really thick as well and these massive binding posts we're still getting um that drop on there because at, at an amp it's amazing the drop you can get at an amp and especially in this sort of situation it can cause a 40 percent error but this sucker still works perfectly fine so it's no problems whatsoever so the hiccup in we must be seeing in this thing must be like the battery chemistry uh like you know causing an effect where okay it draws a bit of current oh, the voltage drops oh, it rises back and and this thing is trying to has a has a software loop in it which calculates the power and then uh affects the load which backs off the load a bit and then oh the battery come rises back up in voltage a bit and then drops back down boom 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 so then it just it just hits the bottom and this thing just starts bloody well oscillating battery oscillation beauty but hey i'll just check another power mode i'll do 10 milliwatts now okay and just see how good it is in 10 milliwatts there we go we're down at 10 our resolution is right down there you know we can you know get better instruments to uh measure this more um you know, and there's better techniques to measure this more accurately but uh yeah that's that's good enough once again yeah 10 milliwatts down to 0 0.24 0 0.21 0 0.15 volts we're still getting our 10 milliwatts eh near enough so i'm happy with that setup it passes the test so let's go and measure some real batteries sorry i won't be able to give you the data today this is going to take a long time we'll have to do it in part two but anyway i've got myself some brand new uh duracell copper top uh duralock ones just got them uh from the local shopping center they're factory fresh and um as you can see the uh duracell one only use constant power down to 250 milliwatts here it doesn't have anything better than that but you know if we jump over to an equivalent energizer uh triple a battery it does actually have a characteristic curve down 100 milliwatts which is what i just did overnight on that uh, fuji battery and yeah it's a similar sort of hour you know um 11 12 hours something like that to discharge 
So um, I will do now 100 milliwatts. We'll start that as our baseline. So I'll discharge one overnight. Uh, I'll get the uh, data tomorrow. Then I'll do another one at maybe, I don't know, 50. Then another one at 10 and have a look at the data. And then I might do them, you know, in between that or whatever. So, yeah, we'll give it a bell. So how many data points do we have to do? Well, if we go back to our graph that we had before, as I said, like we just didn't have the resolution down here, only had that uh, single data point. So we want, you know, like we want better than that. This is once per minute. So let's do it once per second. Okay, let's really go to town. And this took uh, 642 samples at once per uh, minute. So let's just say we had a thousand um, samples because this wasn't a full battery. Let's say we've got a full one. Maybe you know it's a thousand should be a thousand samples should be plenty at once per minute. Well, if we want once per second, well, let's set our Agilent meter to say sixty thousand samples at once per second. All right, so let's do this. We've got the Duracell copper top Duralock thing guaranteed for ten years in storage and don't leak. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Anyway, um, they were manufactured uh, tenth month. Uh, 2014 so they're pretty uh, fresh that's the freshest one I can find at local uh, supermarket so we'll uh, whack that open so let's whack that in there and ta-da 1.60 volts um, we've got our power set to 100 milliwatts everything's hunky-dory uh, we're ready to go and our we've got data login uh, once per Second here, uh, 60,000 uh, readings should be plenty. I can stop it. I don't have to go to 60,000. I can just press um, stop there. No problems whatsoever. So we can uh, uh, sample interview, data log. Everything's, everything's fine. I've got my manual 10-volt uh, range. Everything's ready to go. Right, here we go. So we want to actually start our data logging. There we go. 1.601 volts, it's fine. Okay, you want to start it first before you start your load. We can always chop out a couple of uh, samples in our data set, and here we go. Ta-da! Bingo! 1.63, and we'll just leave it running. And here's where a uh, nice... Um, seven and a half digit or six and a half digit or even five and a half digit meter comes in handy. You can actually, even at low discharge levels, this is a reason, I mean, this is 64 milliamps, you know, it's a reasonable amount of discharge, 100 milliwatts. But even at low levels with a, a um, uh, high resolution multimeter, you can actually see the drop in the thing. So you can just see it slowly counting down there. And if we went down to 10 millivolts, we'd see it be, you know, like one tenth of that uh, speed, for example. So... Yeah, very handy to have a uh, high resolution meter like this. So there you go. I hope you found this uh, useful, even though it was just setting up, uh, you know, a test rig like this. There's actually, you know, a lot to it. If you haven't done this before, hopefully that's uh, some useful info in there for doing uh, battery discharge testing like this. So yeah, I'll leave this running overnight, get the 100 milliwatts, then I'll probably do 50, then I'll do 10, and, you know, have a look at the data, analyse it, and then decide um, if I want to do uh, more or less. And then, uh, of course, this is only for the uh, AAAs. I'll also um, do the AA ones as well, and if people want me to do different brands, but uh, there's nothing in it. This is not a brand comparison thing. This is a uh, test to see if there's any useful data under 0.8 volts, and, well, I don't think we're going to see much. You certainly saw bugger all at 100 milliwatts. It was like, you know, not even 0.1%. It was half a bee's dick. Anyway, hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up because that always helps a lot. Comments and all that stuff down below, links to everything. If you want the shirt, I'll probably link in uh, the uh, Teespring store where I, where I crowdfund. Um, it's sort of like a, yeah, it's not really a crowdfundy thing. But anyway, you can buy the shirt. It'll link in down below somewhere. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.